Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Now we're heading straight to our second conversation where we look at the misuse of security votes by governors of the Federation. I'm talking about the 36 states right now. Now, again, this has also been, you know, a major, you know, conversation. I remember the time where Serap had also urged, you know, the president to scrap and also asked that we scrap, uh, you know, security votes. Also, again, you also have Serap urging that uh, there should be an investigation into the systematic and mismanagement of security votes by gov governors of the state from 1999 up until this moment. We do have a fine gentleman who will be joining the conversation this morning, Barista Kola Ole Uluadare, who is the Deputy Director of Serap. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you. All right, we also have a public relation consultant, Mohammed Abdullahi. Good morning and thank you for joining us as well. Good morning, Nigerians. Okay, so I set up the conversation with uh, Kola Oluwadari. Let's talk about it. You are the deputy director of Serap. Uh, what's actually the brain behind asking that we investigate uh, the mismanagement of security votes by governors from 1999 up until date? Thank you very much. Um, uh, we, we've seen and had the president uh, from his Christmas Day and his New Year speech in Nigeria. Uh, we had said that he has the interest of Nigeria as a part. And now security is paramount uh, as part of his agenda for the year. And, they, and that is part of the issue of uh, outspending on security and the reality of God as we've seen over the year, going to the year 2022. And this is, like you mentioned earlier, it's not new. Uh, this conversation has been ongoing. I think it's more of an advocacy rather than a conversation, since we do not hear the same on the part of And security vote for context is this huge amount of money that is handed across all tiers and even all levels of government, which is uh, not statutorily provided for. There is no legal framework that allows it, yet uh, huge sums of money is being paid out every year. And from a transparency international report I was reading in 2018, it says more than 20, 241 billion dollars paid out annually. And that is in 2018, by the way. I do not have the figures for 2021 or 2022, but of course, naturally, it is expected that that to rule that. And as the name sounds, the nomenclature says security vote. So the natural question to ask is how is this money being spent in the face of growing insecurity in Nigeria? And that uh, brings up the subject once again. Do we need to spend this much? Or do we need to pay going to vote? Given the fact that it has no statutory button, and looking at the huge amount of money we spent on it and the reality on ground, of course, it should be scrapped. And that brings us to the all important topic. What about the ones that have been earned over the years and paid out? How have they been spent? How have they been managed? And for a president that uh, came on board on the mantra of fighting corruption, the least the president can do at this time, which he ought to have done, over the years, by the way, it's not only to scrap the payment of security votes, which it ends also, but to ensure that there is an investigation into how these funds have been spent and spent over the years. And we would agree with me that the Attorney General of the Federation is in a very important position to do this, being the Chief Law Officer of the Federation. All right, um, Mr. Lord Dari, uh, we're going to come back to you, but I also noticed, um, you know, on the uh, uh, your social media platform when uh, Serap did post, uh, you know, your uh, decision to, of course, urge the president to investigate, there was a little bit of backlash. Uh, some people, of course, uh, made it seem like Serap didn't know exactly what it was talking about and didn't understand the constitution. Um, so I hope that you can speak on that very briefly before we go on. But Mohammed Abdullahi, let's, go, let's come to you now. Um, help us understand, you know, what the defense would be for these governors uh, who collect these amounts of money, 241 billion naira in a year, going out to security votes um, is, is, is mind-blowing. Blow, uh, um, so, Mr. Abdullahi, share with us, what would the governors, you know, say that they use these funds for? Um, there's absolutely no defense, uh, because like uh, Mr. Oluwada rightly said, yeah, there is no legal backing. Uh, even the Constitution, I'm not a lawyer, but um, I remember in 2016 or so, uh, a legal luminary, uh, uh, Robert Clark, SAN, mentioned the fact that there was nowhere in the 1999 constitution 
that there is any mention of security vote either for the president or even for the governors or any, anybody whatsoever. And in fact, he mentioned, if I could recollect very well, that this was an offshoot of uh, the military regime. It, some, it was something that was brought into, uh, you know, a power by the military regime in order to checkmate coup plotters. So uh, there was no way that it was mentioned in the 1999 constitution that we currently operate. So in, in first instance, it is illegal. There, there is no legal backing whatsoever. So to come back to your question, in what, what um, make it worse is the fact that there is even no accountability. The security board, nobody accounts for it. You can't ask any question. So it, it is just blank. You understand what I'm saying? So there is no defense whatsoever either for the president or for the governors who are receiving this huge amount. Imagine what 241 billion in a year could do in our health sector or in, in our dilapidated educational sector or whatsoever. You understand? So there is no defense whatsoever. In my own opinion, is one jamboree that needed to be scrapped entirely because it is an avenue for incessant looting. Because you don't, you, you can't, you, 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 you are not, you are, you are not bad by law to account for, even if it's one penny you are collected, you are collecting. So why, 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 why should we continue operating such system that allow for thievery, that allow for looting, that allow for just blatant stealing of a public treasury? I think there's no defense whatsoever. Okay, um, let's come to, let's bring uh, Kola Olua Dari uh, back to the conversation. Uh, at this point in time, should we be talking about scrapping uh, the security votes for governors or investigating or asking for accountability? Which of this should we be considering? Mr. Olua Dari, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. So, so the All question right. now is, at this point, should we be asking that we scrap security votes for governors or ask for investigation or ask for accountability? Um, thank you very much. Both, actually. And the advocacy for both has been done for a while, not only from Sarah, but by well-meaning citizens as well, and particularly on the part of Sarah. We have a pending litigation on this issue as well at the federal court, I think. So at the same time, uh, the advocacy can be carried on for the uh, concurrently. Um, security votes should be scrapped. But meanwhile, what about the ones that have been under the past, which is the basis of the uh, latest letter to the president? Even if security votes were to be scrapped today, it is a fact that from 1999, when we started this uh, democracy, it has been paid out to governments. So why can we not have investigations into how these amounts have been spent over the years? And curiously, uh, for a government that is uh, bill that uh, purports to fight corruption and giving our uh, that economic position, uh, the 2022 budget that's signed by the president has more than six trillion um, uh, deficits. How are we supposed to finance that without growing that profile? And like Mr. Mohammed had said, you can imagine what 241 billion uh, we do. And that was attacked then uh, in 2018, could do to offset our budget deficit, particularly our spending on security. And when you look at the context of where we are today, nearly all the anti-corruption agencies, including the army itself, complains of paucity of funds. And so couldn't these funds that have been paid out to governors be better used to fight security by giving it to those that need it really the most? And so we're talking about the military and other paramilitary agencies that really need to, to, serve, to fight the army. Um, to, to, to do what they do satisfactorily and to ensure that Nigerians are secure. So we can carry on the advocacy to demand for accountability of those that have been earned and those that are still been earned, while we also carry on the call uh, for it to be scrapped. And more importantly, uh, for proper context, from the Transparency International Report, it's, it's quite ironic, almost like a paradox, that in the 2018 budget, the budget of the Nigerian army was 155 billion there. And that makes, means that security votes, total security vote paid out in the 2018 budget is more than even the budget of the Nigerian army. Is, is, is that not curious? All right, Mr. Luadari. It, it, it just doesn't stand. It doesn't make sense. All right, Mr. Luadari, um, you know, I think you both, you know, should be able to speak on this um, as briefly as possible. Um, I, I noticed, you know, that there was some backlash, like I mentioned, you know, with um, your post 
um, on your social media page uh, concerning this issue. Uh, a lot of people questioned, you know, why Serap is asking the president when it should instead direct its, uh, uh, you know, conversation to state houses of assembly, you know, and uh, the audit, uh, um, auditing that should be done on, at the state level, not at the federal level. So I want you to share, you know, your view on that one. And then also, uh, can a government really you know, ask governors to stop receiving security votes. Is there any political will that you've seen in Nigeria's history that will be able to take that money from the governors? Um, Mr. Loader, I want you to start first in one minute, if you can. Thank you very much. I like the fact that you talked of political will. But the president is the president. That's why he's the president. And he's elected on the, on the mantle of fighting corruption. And that is why he can appropriately instruct the Attorney General Federation to take the step. Importantly, because there is no statutory backing for these laws. So which laws will the state of the assembly make or repeal in the absence of any statutory provision, either in the constitution or even at the state level, the state laws. So this does not concern the governors of the state of assembly and the case may be. This should happen at the highest level possible, including from the president, who also needs to set the president by declaring uh, to collect security votes and to account for what he has done when he was while he was in office. And to speak as to the political will, that political will, truth be told, is absent in this present administration to pursue the war against corruption. Um, and as to the uh, alleged backlash on social media, it would appear that people are either misinformed or misunderstand the context of security vote. Uh, you know, to All right. Mr. Abdullahi, also, you know, same question political will, and also, um, you know, should the state houses of assembly also be able to look in, into these things? I agree with Mr. Kola. Uh, the political will is very lacking, but we, uh, with the recent uh, letter by Sarah, uh, they as an organization have done their bit. So we see, particularly when this government came into power with the mantra of fighting corruption, we also we, we would like to see the president take the bull by the horn by saying, okay, fine, probably this has been illegal, I, I wasn't informed, and so on and so forth. Let's stop this and let's account for what we have collected in the past and let's put mechanisms in place, measures in place to stop this and make this very, make this, you know, illegal so that government to come, because you have less than two years to go, you can set the precedent by putting in place laws that will ensure the stoppage of security goods. So I think it's very possible if the president is, is, is really serious about the anti corruption war. Uh, that uh, he's talking about that, that brought him to power. Okay, so but let's also quickly talk about this one now. Uh, the, the fact that there would always be argument from the governors that they're not chief security officers of their state, and uh, constantly we see that, you know, the fact that they're collecting security votes. Uh, so how do we explain the constant insecurity or security concerns in, uh, you know, the country, in different states of the Federation uh, with the security votes that are being collected? Uh, Kola Oluwadari, I'd like you to share your thoughts on this one. Thank you very much. It, it, it goes to the heart of the discussion and the conversation we have presently. The facts on ground, the reality on ground, does not justify the continuous payment of security votes, uh, particularly since there is no statutory backing for sale. Why would they need, why would we, there is no justification at all, except as like Mohammed, as Mr. Mohammed had mentioned, it's an avenue uh, to loot this thought, particularly in the absence of any kind of framework to account for these funds. The best we can have is to stop it and to account for how those funds are spent. And when you understand that this, uh, the security use we have in Nigeria is partly attributable, if not in, in the main, to it's a small business economic problem. And those funds could be better spent to address the root causes of insecurity in the first place, which means we're talking about good roads, we're talking about the basic infrastructure like health, education, portable water, and the likes. That will go a long way to curb security, while the security agencies can do the actual um, part of actually fighting security. So what we've seen is that the monies that could be given to the security forces to fight uh, the security are given to the governors, who ideally should use it to address its economic problems in their different states. But they do not do that. They purpose to spend the money on securing the state. And really, you have called them the chief security officer of the state. Who is in the best position to defend the state both internally and externally? Externally, that belongs to uh, the military. Internally, that belongs, that's the work of the police. That, how does that, how is that a function of the government as the head of the executive of the state? It beats me particularly in the absence of any kind of state police structure. All right. Um, 
you know, one of the things that was uh, also mentioned was that, you know, some of these governors use these funds. And we're talking billions and billions of Naira for political campaigns and for, you know, their own personal use. And it, it's, it's just really, really shocking. Uh, thinking back at uh, how much money has been expended in this regard since 1999 and past governors have simply just gone away without, you know, questions asked. Um, so, Mr. Abdullahi, in 30 seconds, um, tell, tell me a little bit about how you feel, you know, concerning that. Um, these, you know, funds are really just used for personal use. Uh, uh, it's the uh, absence, absence of any legal framework. Uh, what, what do you expect? Is, is, is really is really saddening because like I mentioned earlier um, just imagine what those I'm sure uh, from 1999 to date it will it, it will amount to trillions of naira just imagine what those what that kind of money would have done to you know our lack of infrastructure and so on and so forth but again I must mention uh, going back to uh, the, the question of the, the lady earlier now even when the governors are receiving this security vote, what have they what 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 have been what, what have they shown for it that they are receiving it at the moment for the past uh, ten years or so? So there is no need since there is an absence of uh, uh, state security infrastructure. I don't see any need for the state governors, particularly, to receive uh, uh, to continue receiving security vote. Because, like uh, Mr. Kola said, the military, the police, and so on are all federal infras uh, are all federal structures. So, why not use such money to continue to fund the police and the military better, rather than underfunding the actual structure that is supposed to take care of security and giving it out to governors who would never account for it, who by law are not are not held right. to account. All right. Uh, Mohammed Abdullahi and of course uh, Kola Oluwadari, thank you both for speaking with us. Um, we hope that the conversation never dies, you know, until, of course, something is actually done. But thank you, of course, uh, for joining us this morning and for sharing your thoughts with us. Have a great day ahead. All right. And that's where we will be saying goodbye this morning. Once again, I hope the conversation never dies. These are very, very important conversations that should uh, create, um, you, know, you know, at least touch the minds of Nigerians across the country. For now... Join us on our social media platforms. It's simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. Same with our YouTube channel and also Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Osao Gie Ogbawa. And I am Messi Boko. Do have a fantastic day ahead.